Today I'm sharing some news from my nest about sourdough starters, water bath canning, and an update on making soaked oatmeal. Hi sweet friends, my name is Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest. This channel is all about living the simple life by cooking from scratch, making home remedies, and creating a cozy home with thrift store finds. So if you're like me and you like living the simple life, subscribe to my channel and be sure to click on the little notification bell that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Today one of the first things that I wanted to talk about was making sourdough starters because I have a previous video which I'll link to on what I call making my foolproof sourdough starter. And I make that using rye flour. And some of you have asked me, oh, can I use a different flour? I can't find rye flour and this, that, and the other thing. So I wanted to discuss that in a little detail. The reason I use rye flour to get my sourdough starter going is because that's the easiest flour uh, that is really can be kind of foolproof. And if you struggle with making a sourdough starter, it's great to start with rye flour. But I know some of you have shared with me that you can't find rye flour at your supermarket and you don't want to order it online because you definitely can order it online. That's no problem at all. And if you're willing to do that once, it can be well worth it if, if you're new to making sourdough starter. But the good news is that if you can't find rye flour and you don't want to um, uh, order it online, uh, you can start with whole wheat flour. It's not necessarily 100% foolproof as it is working with rye flour, but it is a little easier than trying to start a sourdough starter with all-purpose flour. So that's your, your next best you know, way to go with this. Now that said, uh, another question that I've received from a number of you is, well, if I start my sourdough starter with rye flour or I start my sourdough starter with whole wheat flour, I don't really like those. You know, whole wheat can be kind of heavy or I don't like the taste of rye flour or whatever the case may be. So can I start feeding it with all-purpose flour so that over time it's pretty much just an all-purpose flour starter, sourdough starter. And yes, you can definitely do that. Now a lot of people will say, oh the sourdough starter gets upset. <laughs> kind of funny if you change what you're feeding it and whatnot, but I got a little tip, a little secret, <laughs> not really a secret, but a little tip um, about how to help your sourdough starter make the transition from rye flour or from whole wheat flour. And what you do is you start feeding it with your all-purpose flour. This is what I use is just, this is, uh, I live in Central Texas. We have a grocery store chain here called HEB, which is wonderful, by the way, if you, if you uh, have access to them. And this is just an organic, uh, unbleached, all-purpose flour that they make. And I will start feeding, once I get my rye sourdough starter going, and that's what I've got here that I've had going for a while now, uh, once I get it going and it's really bubbly and doing well, maybe after a week or two, I will transition over to start feeding it with all-purpose flour. And what I'll do to give it a little help and to maybe make the starter a little happy that when it says, oh, I'm getting a little different food here, I like to add a tablespoon of sugar. And I just use plain white sugar. I use organic sugar, but it's just plain white sugar. And I feel that that gives the starter a little something extra to eat, like it had with the rye flour or the whole wheat flour, because those flours give it a little more, I guess you could say nutrition in a sense, they give it a little more something to eat than just the plain white all-purpose flour. So that's what I do. And I just add in that, when I the first day that I make that transition of moving it over to eating uh, or being fed all-purpose flour, I put in a tablespoon of sugar. And then I watch the next day, did it bubble up? Is it doing well? And if so, then great. I just go forward from there on in, feeding it all-purpose flour. If it seems like it's struggling, struggling a little, then I'll just do the same thing again. The next day when I go to feed it, remove some of the starter and then add my all-purpose flour and, and my water and another tablespoon of sugar. 
and usually that's plenty. Usually by the next day it's bubbling, it's doing great, and it's very happy. So keep that in mind when you're making um, your sourdough starter that yes, you can, if you use the uh, one that I linked to before, if you use the recipe for making my foolproof sourdough starter, which starts with rye flour, yes, you can transition to all-purpose flour. And just keep in mind that little trick of a little bit of sugar just in case you find that it's struggling when you, your sourdough starter is struggling when you make that transition. But I think it should go well. So let me know in the comments below if you have tried making the foolproof starter with rye flour and if you were successful uh, or if you tried it if you didn't want to go the rye flour route and you tried whole wheat flour, did that work? I'd be really curious to know. I, I've got to think about this. I haven't made a sourdough starter with whole wheat flour in a long time because I usually always, I always, I like rye bread and I always have rye flour on hand. So I usually uh, start one if I need to with uh, rye flour. But I'd be interested in hearing if any of you have started it with whole wheat flour and how your success was. And if you have at some point uh, before seeing this video, if you've just done this on your own where you tra uh, transitioned uh, using uh, all purpose flour and what did you do and did did it take off immediately, great, without any little extra boost of sugar? Um, or did you have some struggles or, or whatnot? I'd be interested in hearing that. Well, that's that. So I just wanted to let you know, uh, as we go into January, we might be doing more baking in this cold weather and making breads and whatnot, um, just to give you some little uh, tips on what you can do uh, to uh, work with your sourdough starter. Now, one more thing that I just wanted to mention bef before we move on to talking about water bath canning is I want to show you how my sourdough starter looks. And I wanted to show you the bowl that I put it in is a flat bottom bowl. Certainly you can use anything you want. You can use a crock. I find those always bubble over though because I usually have a good amount going. Um, or you can just use a regular bowl. But the reason I like these flat bottom bowls is that uh, they allow, they give me a lot of room to really aerate my starter. And I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can actually see how my starter looks. This was fed yesterday morning, and now this is the next day. It's, it's morning here now. And I just wanted to show you how it looks uh, before I give it another feeding. And so here's my sourdough starter. I just wanna bring you in closer so you can see how nice and bubbly it is and uh, <laughs> all the good activity that's going on in here. Now the next thing I wanted to talk about was water bath canning. And you may remember last month, and I'll, I'll link to it uh, in the iCards, I made a three citrus marmalade and then I showed all the steps involved in water bath canning. It, and those steps apply to not just making jam or jelly or anything that you want a water bath can. And the reason that I wanted to mention this to you was because um, some people have asked me about this. In the video, I explain at a certain point, and I wrote it down, I have to go get it, but at a certain uh, point in the video, I explain exactly about the dynamics of what finger tight means, because that can be a little confusing to people. And let me just get this. And I wrote it down over here. Sorry, I'm getting out of the screen. But at the, if you go to the um, three citrus marmalade video, at the 39 minute, it's kind of a long video. I'll warn you if you watch the whole thing. But there's a lot of steps involved, and I go real slow, and I walk you through the whole water bath canning process. At the 39. Uh, minute 18 seconds uh, part of the video, I go into detail about and I show exactly what uh, finger tight uh, means. And I thought that might be helpful because during the month of January, there's a wonderful series that a number of ladies and one gentleman, um, uh, people that I'm sure you know, uh, Mandy from More to Life and Paul from Paul's Real Thumb and a bunch of other ladies um, are doing a Jar It Up January. And so they're gonna be having a lot of um, videos on canning, both water bath canning and pressure canning. And so uh, what exactly is finger tight always seems to come up. And I get a lot of questions about that too. So I just wanted to mention that in that uh, uh, video from uh, uh, last month. And so um, be sure to check that out. And also if you, citrus is in season right now, so this is a great time to be making marmalade if you like to do that. 
And the last thing that I want to mention, because this is something I've also gotten questions on, and actually something I'm going to be making today, so I have it out and ready to go. Uh, I made a video, this is quite a few months ago, about, and I'll link to it in the iCard, about um, how to make soaked oatmeal, starting with oat groats, which are it's like the equivalent of like wheat berries or spelt berries. If you see, oat groats are like the oat berry. And if you buy those in bulk and you want to just start right from square one with oat groats to make uh, soaked oatmeal, I show how to do that. Now, some people uh, may not be able to find oat groats. Um, I, they sell them in the bulk section at my grocery store in like the health food area. Um, but if you can't find them and, and you don't want to order them online, and I totally get that, I completely understand. If I can buy it in person, I always prefer that. Um, but I will put a link down in the description below to where you can find oat groats if that's something that you're interested in trying. But if you can't, don't worry about it because probably at your grocery store you can find steel cut oats, which are basically the oat groats that have just been chopped up for you and so it makes life a little easier than uh, starting with the actual whole oat groat. And this is Bob's Red Mill. And my grocery store carries a lot of different products by him, and your grocery store might also. But don't worry if you if they don't have this brand. There's McCain, McCann's, I think, is one. It comes in the can, the old-fashioned can. Sometimes it also comes in a box. And there are other brands. You may find it in the cereal aisle of your grocery store. You may find it in the health food aisle of your grocery store. You might just have to look around. Uh, at my grocery store, they sell this in the, in the cereal aisle, but they also have one, Bob's Red Mill makes one, that are steel cut oats that are guaranteed to be gluten-free. Oats, are, I think, are gluten-free, but because of the way um, the wind can blow and seeds and whatnot, that um, they can't always guarantee that it's gluten-free. But, but Bob's Red Mill does have a line of uh, steel cut oats that he guarantees are gluten free wherever they're grown. And that I usually see in the health food aisle at my grocery store. Um, <clears throat> like they have a section for gluten free. So you may find those too. And But these are exceptionally good and I, I laugh because these are called the Golden Spurtle World Champion Oatmeal. And if you're not familiar with a Spurtle, I actually have one. Let me see. I think it's over here. Yeah. Uh, this is a spurtle, and this is what the Scottish people use, it's very old-fashioned, uh, use to um, stir the oatmeal. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> but in any event, if you get the steel cut oats, you can watch the video where I have where I'm making it with uh, oat groats, and basically you just go through the steps where you're going to, where I start with browning them in the oven. I like to toast them in the oven. I find it really makes a nice flavor. So you'll just go ahead and uh, take a baking sheet, line it with parchment paper, I just find that easier, and then put, say you're making a cup, a cup of the dried uh, steel cut oats onto your baking sheet, bake it in your oven 350 at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 5-10 you know, minutes. Uh, you're going to definitely smell it and it's going to start uh, just smelling delicious. And then you'll take it out and just follow the steps that I have in, in that video where you'll, if you want at that point, I like to grind it up a bit um, to have like a little powder and, and some bits as well. And then I uh, add the water, I soak it overnight with a, a, an, an, some type of acid, you know, vinegar, lemon juice, something like that. And then I cook it, add more water the next day, cook it, you'll see in the video. But um, I just wanted to mention that yes, you can use steel cut oats and, and make a nice soaked oatmeal that'll really be delicious and easy to digest. That's why, and I explained in that video, that's why we soak it, because we make it uh, more easy to digest and allow our body to be able to assimilate the nutrients more that are in the oats. If you'd like to learn more about soaking grains, as well as mastering the basics of traditional foods cooking, be sure to click on my playlist over here and then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Love and God bless.